Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Monday, April 1st, 2024. Stand up for your country. We're very emotional weekend uh, with the funeral of Detective Jonathan Diller on Long Island. I wrote a column on it called Politics of Death. I hope you read the column on BillOReilly.com. Entirely free to read. Just go in there. And I also wrote the message of the day about the aftermath of attending the funeral, which I did. Now, this story is all about good and evil, which were in sharp contrast at the funeral of Detective Diller. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So I attended the service at St. Rose of Lima Roman Catholic Church in Massapequa, As you know, I was raised on Long Island. I know this place as well as any human being knows it. Um, I stood outside the church and I watched thousands of police officers from all over the country uh, in an emotional display, but also a display of power. That the police were there in force and uh, they were unbelievably disciplined. All right. They kept their uh, posture and it was ours. Then we went inside the church, which was heartbreaking. Um, The officer, Jonathan Diller, as you know, was murdered by a career criminal last week, a criminal who should never have been on the street. Nobody can make an, uh, uh, an argument that he should have been. There's his one year old baby. Okay, And this child will never know his father. And his widow, 29-year-old Stephanie Diller, is obviously devastated, but delivered a eulogy to her husband, which was magnificent. But in that time, in the body of the eulogy, most of it was spent on describing Jonathan and their relationship. But she did depart to scold Politicians in New York State. Roll it. It's been two years and two months since Detective Rivera and Detective Mora made the ultimate sacrifice, just like my husband, Jonathan Diller. Dominique Rivera stood in front of all the elected officials present today pleading for change. That change never came. And now my son will grow up without his father. I will grow old without my husband. And his parents have to say goodbye to their child. How many more police officers and how many more families need to make the ultimate sacrifice before we start protecting them? And New York State and city does not protect innocent people. They don't protect the police or their residents. They flat out do not protect them. No two sides to the story. The progressive philosophy and progressives control this state is that criminals, even violent criminals, need to be treated, not punished. And I will prove that in a moment. You cannot have a just society without confronting injustice. It's impossible. Yet the progressive politicians and the media in New York that backs them up, all right, they don't care about injustice. Right? Because they believe that the whole justice system is rotten and biased against black Americans. That is the genesis of all of this racial politics. Now, 80% of arrests in New York City are not fully adjudicated. What does that mean? The guy who killed, and I mean, I'm not going to say allegedly because there's witnesses to it, uh, who killed Detective Diller, and and he was promoted posthumously, uh, Detective. His name Guy Rivera, okay? He's 34 years old. He's been arrested 21 times, served two prison terms. He's, He's a drug dealer, okay? But get this. He's arrested 21 times, 19 of those arrests went nowhere because the DAs in New York City, with the exception of Staten Island, don't care about prosecuting guys like Rivera. So he can go out, sell heroin on the street, fentanyl on the street, beat you to a pulp, 
do anything he wants and get away with it totally. They put him away twice, but for short periods of time. Now, get this. Last April 2023, Rivera is arrested for carrying an illegal gun. He's out. The case has not been adjudicated. And the city of New York is stonewalling us and won't tell us why Rivera was released after being arrested with a legal gun. I'm going to do more on this tomorrow because we're trying to get the information. The city has it. They don't want to give it up because they know they're letting dangerous people out on the street to commit even more violent crimes. They know it and they continue to do it. That's evil. Yes, the criminal is evil, but the people who enable him are evil too. There's no, again, no two sides to this story. Nobody will debate me on this. Nobody will come up against me on it. Okay, so tomorrow we're, we're really pushing it. Trying to find out why this dope dealer arrested in April 2023 could sit in a car in Queens with a loaded gun and kill a 31-year-old New York City police officer. How is that possible? after two convictions and 21 arrests. How? All right, presiding over all this madness is the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. She is the leader of the state. She showed up to the wake and there was a confrontation by one of the Diller family members. We believe it was an uncle. She only stayed about 10 minutes. Hochul is a weak leader, okay? I was standing yesterday, uh, Saturday, next to Attorney General Letitia James. I was five feet away from her, all right? And we made eye contact. She nodded, I nodded, okay? Now, I don't think it was wrong, and I, I disagreed with my uh, WABC radio colleague, Sid uh, Rosenberg, about this this morning. I don't think it was wrong for Hochul and James to go and show respect to the family. And my job is to try to persuade both of these women to stop the madness. Stop it. You have power. Do the right thing. That's my job. Sid condemns them, and I certainly understand the family and Sid doing that. My job is to persuade them to stop. Do you realize that the state of New York has spent tens of millions of dollars prosecuting Donald Trump on ridiculous stuff, and then they turn around and tell the people of New York they can't afford to hire any more police? you realize that? Talk about corruption. I my, my God. All right, let's sum this up. So a 31-year-old police officer, Jonathan Diller, who went to the high school that my son went to, same high school, St. Mary's, okay? He leaves a one-year-old son. Put that baby's picture back up, okay? And this boy will never, ever know his father. And the reason this happened is that New York City and state politicians allow violent criminals to roam the streets of the city and state, armed and dangerous, time after time after time. No contrition, never saying they're sorry, and they never change. And who backs them up? The New York Times ran the funeral story of the dead police officer on page 21. Newsday, the newspaper of Long Island, gave it two pages and neglected to put in the soundbite I played you from Stephanie Diller chastising New York's politicians. Newsday couldn't put that in there. Both the Times and Newsday and the New York Daily News are far left operations. 
they allow the politicians, they encourage the progressives to do the insane things they do. All of these people, if you want to use a cliche, have blood on their hands. All of them. Because it goes on and on and on and on. And that's the memo. Now, there was another situation yesterday in New York City. Um, there was Easter Mass in St. Patrick's Cathedral, a big day, day there. Um, the Cardinal said the Mass, and it was invaded by pro-Hamas demonstrators who went right into the church and interrupted the service. All right? Right in there, screaming and yelling their pro-Hamas stuff. This is New York City. Three arrests. Matthew Menzies, 31, John Rosendahl, Gregory Schwedak. Okay, all three of them are radical leftists. Do you get a theme here? You see the theme? <clears throat> Excuse me. Get the theme? All right, now they're way beyond progressives. These people are communists and socialists. That's who's behind the pro Hamas demonstration. They don't believe in God. They don't, you know, this is just a stunt. So they were arrested, these three, and there were others that weren't arrested. Nothing will happen to them. Charged with misdemeanors, nothing. They won't be prosecuted. Just like the cop killer, 19 times wasn't prosecuted. 19. New York. Wall Street tells us to put our money in an IRA or 401k. They think risking your life savings in the Wall Street casino is a secure investment for our future. Did you know the average American who follows that advice might outlive their savings by 10 years? With Bank on Yourself, grow and protect your hard-earned money. This retirement alternative has never had a loss in more than 160 years. Do you want predictable annual growth? control of your money, and tax-free retirement income? Then go to bankonyourself.com slash no spin, and they will send you a free report with the retirement plan that big banks and Wall Street are desperately hoping you never hear about. Again, go to bankonyourself.com slash no spin for your free report. All right, let's go to the mail. Uh, we got Vicky. Uh, who says, what is it going to take to wake up the American people? I don't know. I don't know. I'm dealing with my own state now, New York, and I think that this is a turning point, but I don't know. I don't know how any human being, and I shouldn't say that, I don't know how about any person at this point in history could vote for progressives. I don't. They're doing so much damage. It's, I put myself in Germany in 1933. You had to see what the Nazi party was doing. It had to. It was there for everybody to see. Yet 40% of the German people voted for it. What? Now, I'm not comparing the progressive movement to the Nazi movement. That's not a valid comparison. I'm trying to tell you that there are some people who are so dense you can't get through. But I, I just, it's just staggering to me. Sharon, a bigger question is why Ronna McDaniel take the position, would take the position on NBC for money. What do you think she took the position? You know, offered her a lot of money and she wanted to get her message out. I would have done the same thing. Uh, Bill McClure, Phoenix, Arizona. Bill, I heard you talk about your killing books for some time now. My wife found me a copy of Killing Patton and just started. It's incredible. Um, you know, at this point, I use the word history a lot. You really have to know your history. That's why I wrote Confronting the Presidents down in September. You really got to know how far away we are drifting from our original spirit in traditional America. How far away a country's veering from it. Mark Marco, all right, North Babylon, New York. I'm a Republican, plan on supporting and voting for Trump, and I agree that Biden is a terrible president. However, if we want to be fair and balanced, we must recognize that the stock market has done outstanding under Biden. 
Trump were president during the soaring market the last two years, you'd be taking full credit. Okay. I have no beef for that at all. But you've got to temper that with most people can't afford to buy stocks. And their expenses to live are up 20%. That's the fact. Jack. Mary Flagel. I'm on Idaho. I appreciate hearing uh, the no spin news every day. Yours a voice of reason, O'Reilly, in a world of chaos. I wanted you to know we are listening out here. I know. It's all over the world now with YouTube. We're on YouTube and everywhere. So, and I appreciate it. You know, I'm hoping that we get stronger and stronger and stronger. John uh, Sponsia, Brookfield, Wisconsin. Well, your final thought has today hit home. I taught my children at an early age that depending on others will many times end in disappointment. Unfortunately, sometimes it's unavoidable. Biggest example is the airlines. Yeah, you got to depend on the airlines and they're going to hose you most, not most of the time, but much of the time. But if it's a lifestyle of you depending on somebody, you know, if you are codependent, not good. Uh, Marshall Walsh, Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Say, I saved the movie Killing Jesus to watch on Easter. It was amazing. I highly recommend it. I found myself watching from a historical perspective. Yeah, that, that's what we did. There are people who run around going, oh, Jesus never existed. Crazy. Judy Weatherford, Plainview, Texas. Thank you for speaking the truth, O'Reilly. You are welcome, Judy. Thank you for watching and listening. We really appreciate it. All right. So go to BillOReilly.com store, pick up the self-reliance mugs, uh, give them as gifts, especially younger people. Got a, you know, in the future, if you are not self-reliant, you're going to get badly, badly hurt. Need to be independent and think about life, not have somebody else tell you what to do and what to think. Self-reliance. Also pre-order Uh, Confronting the Presidents out September 10th. This book is very important. You will love it. We will not charge you until we ship and you will get it first. Word of the day, do not be agog when writing to me, A-G-O-G. Bill, no, I was going to give you that. It's, you can write to me at bill at billoreilly.com. That easy? Bill at BillOReilly.com. Okay, so um, we hope you do. Don't be a gog. Back with good and evil in a moment. As you know, Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. His famous Giza Dream Sheets are the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, get a queen size set for $59.98. King size just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in my pillow's history. Mike and my pillow employees continue to be canceled by some big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate your great support during these times and want to thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. So please go to mypillow.com or call 800 869 0298. Use promo code Bill. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets at the lowest prices, so call 800-869-0298. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code Bill, to get free shipping today. By now, you have heard me talk about Delta Rescue. They are a fantastic organization that helps rescue animals from the wilderness. You know I'm a dog lover, so is Leo Grillo, the founder of Delta Rescue. It is his life's mission to provide everlasting care for these once abandoned animals. I myself have donated to Delta Rescue. Do you believe it is part of man's duty to care for dogs and horses, the animals that so much of our history is tied to? If so, please consider making a donation or consult your advisor about leaving a gift in your will or trust. There can be some tax advantages and it's a great way to help Delta Rescue accomplish their mission. So please visit DeltaRescue.org to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Okay, final thought. There are three categories of human being. Good people, bad people, 
misguided people. So at the beginning, I was uh, talking about my job is try to persuade the misguided people to stop being misguided. Sometimes I'm successful. I started that when I was a high school teacher. And I could reach some of them. I, read, I reached some of them. Turn them around. Not all. Because people believe what they want to believe. That's it. But if you present to the misguided people a narrative that makes sense, they'll resist at first, but then the resistance gets lower and lower and lower as more data comes in. That's my job. It's why I do this. I don't need the money. I, don't, I could be riding around on a golf court, as I said, at the villages, playing pickleball. But I am trying to persuade people all over the world that there is a right way to go about things. Okay. The bad people, you're not going to make them. And this is the criminal justice system collapsing. They think there's some magic wand going to get these people off fentanyl and heroin. Most of them don't want to get off it. And they're willing to hurt you and everybody else to get the money to buy the narcotics. These are bad people. Oh, they have a disease. Oh, no, no. They're hurting other people for their own whatever it is. I mean, there's no excuse. They're bad. And, in that, and most of them are going to stay bad. It's about 15% of the population. Most of the people on this earth are misguided. Good people, when you find one, boy, embrace that person. I say 35% are good, 15 hardcore bad, and 50 misguided. And by misguided, they, they don't want to get involved. They don't want to right the wrong. They don't want to stand up. They're afraid. Fear is tremendous. They don't want to say, I might get in trouble. Somebody might come after me. You know, those are the misguided people. We're trying to get those to merge with the 35% of good people. So where are you? Where are you in that mosaic? Be honest. Most people rationalize their behavior. I mean, Governor Hochul and, and Biden and all these, every day they go home and they just rationalize their behavior. They see it. They can't not see it. Oh, no, 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 I'm doing a good thing for the migrants or I'm doing a good thing because that's a racist system and I'm tearing it down and those white cops are bad. And, you know, they rationalize. Every human being rationalizes to some extent, but some people do their whole life is a rationalization. All right. But if you buy into that, if you allow that, then you're bad. You're bad. That's not an excuse. OK, you got to step back and get actively pursue and enhance good. And by being good, it's a very simple equation. You love your neighbor as yourself. You help other people. You don't put them in danger. But I tell you what, I could have Kathy Hochul watch this whole broadcast, and I don't believe Governor Hochul would change a scintilla of her profile. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.